Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs on YouTube, Video Geek Productions, The Brian Smith YouTube Channel, Jonathan Von Esch, Wade Hendricks, Larry Presnell, and from support from viewers like you. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right, we got a triple threat challenge today. Three cars, three reds, all shiny. Here we go. Hey there, folks. Chuck here. And this one's a bit of a different one. We've got three cars, and they're going to go in a different direction than I usually do. I'm kind of known for doing my weathered builds, but my brother's friend Jacob came to me with a request for the renewal and reimagining of three of his childhood diecast cars. This Matchbox Ferrari Testarossa, the Ferrari F40, and a familiar sight on my channel, the Hot Wheels Split Window Corvette. Now, normally I wouldn't take on a challenge like this, but first, Jacob offered me money, which I can use to exchange for goods and services, and second, I've been challenged more than once now to try my hand at this type of build. What type of build, you ask? Let's get to the breakdown. First, Jacob wanted to make them stock, and when Jacob said make them stock, he also meant keeping the factory wheels. Okay. Then he wanted to make them red. Okay. Finally, and most importantly, he wanted to make them shiny. Oh boy. Let's see how we do here. Ready? Punch that subscribe button. Let's boogie. Breakdown of all of these was pretty straightforward, except I made one critical error that black trim piece around the back of the Testarossa. Turns out was not paint, it was plastic. And it melted in the stripper. So I had to get another one. The bodies weren't too bad. The 63 Corvette is infamously tricky and it, its casting lines were particularly a pain to get out. They're so bad you think you get them and then you prime it and realize you didn't get them so you have to go back and sand them down again and reprime. The Testarossa and the Ferrari F40 were much easier to handle. Once primer was on, it was time to pick the paints. It seemed like cheating to make them all the same red. So I opted for Ladybug Red for the F40, Tuscan Red for the Testarossa, and Vallejo Red, imaginative name for the split window. The Corvette, of course, has the infamous Hot Wheels nub steering wheel. That was replaced with a 3D printed one. Because there wasn't any real weathering to do on these cars, the process went pretty quickly. Before I did the panel liner, I applied a coat of rattle can semi-gloss varnish from Varthane. I didn't want them to be too shiny yet because I wanted there to be something for the panel liner to stick to. And because it was water-based, I wasn't too worried about the panel liner, which is oil-based, reactivating the varnish. The undersides also got a bit of a panel liner treatment just so the details would stand out a bit. And the lake pipes on the Corvette got a little pin vise drilling for a more realistic open look. The weird interior slash tail light slash grill area on the Testarossa got a semi-gloss black Rust-Oleum paint job before getting the interior painted with a mix of varnished wood paint for the leather and chocolate brown for the dark dashboard and center console areas. And of course the yellow dot in the middle of the steering wheel for the Ferrari logo. The interiors on the F40s were almost all red, so I used the Vallejo Red to give the fabric a bright red look. Again, the interior here was painted with a semi-gloss black, and the engine was painted with DSP silver. I also took the silver over to the underside of the Ferrari to simulate the bright aluminum parts of the engine. The underside of the VET is tricky because it's not really based too much in reality, so I stuck mostly to metallic accents on the bottom of it. I gave some touches of burnt iron across all three different cars for a dark metallic accent and followed up the metallics with a little Stuart Simple Mirror paint to add some reflectivity. Both the original Testarossa and its replacement had pretty rough windows, so I shined them up as best I could with varying grades of sandpaper going up to 2500 grit and then hit it with some plastics polish and the buffing wheel on my Dremel. I used the burnt iron again to draw out the windshield wiper indentations on the glass. They didn't come out perfect but because the windshield was pretty shiny it was easy to touch them up with a toothpick and with a little gentle rubbing get the details down to a hairline finish. I did the same for the F40 as well and then it was time for the dunk and off to the dryer. It was at this point I remembered that the Corvette also had an interior 
I decided to go with a red on red look. This is the ladybug red that was used in the F40. I also used it to touch up the top of the chassis because that simulates the floor of the interior and then forgot it was wet before getting out the Stuart Simple paint for the bumpers and the lake pipes. So it got a little messy, but I persisted. In my last two builds, I cut out the spare tire on the back, so it was fun to actually detail the spare tire for a change. I overdid it on the Stuart Simple paint because I knew I would touch it up with the black and the black would be easier to chip away than the Stuart Simple paint. In Photoshop, I went on year one site and found pictures of replacement trim pieces for Corvettes and used those to make the trim pieces for the Corvette. And once they were on, I hit them with some Microsol to make sure that they stuck nice and firmly to the surface. The Ferrari decals were easy because I had already made some for Opa, one of my fellow YouTube diecast builders. Check out his channel in the description below. He's a good guy. Well, then came the part that I was really nervous about, the clear coat. This is something that is still relatively foreign to me, and I had heard good things from several builders, I believe including Brett over at Double Beast Customs, check out his channel, about the Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane Clear Gloss. I had done this on the Jeeps as well, but with these three different types of paint, it was anyone's guess to see how they reacted. And then it was off to curing in the food dehydrator. Hey, there's those Jeeps again. While those were curing, it was time for the final detailings on the interior, which included a wash in null oil, painting in the taillights, and adding satin clear varnish to the leather. Once the clear coat was dry and I allowed over a full day for them to sit and cure, I used the Vallejo Heavy Charcoal to paint in the lines around the windows where rubber gaskets would be, and Stuart Simple Paint for everywhere there'd be chrome. If you're using chrome paint, use it over the clear coat. It seems true of Stuart Simple or, or of the Malto pens. If you clear over them, it's not going to look good. Each of Jacob's cars got custom license plates, including this one. This is Jacob's F40. I also decided to make taillights in Photoshop for the Testarossa because the Testarossa has louvered taillights and the Matchbox casting, because of its size, had just blocks where the taillights would be. I'm assuming on more premium versions, they probably used a decal. I also added a very thin black decal on the hood of the Testarossa to simulate the intake scoop. Then it was time to snap all the cars together give them each their flying valiant decal and their number designations. All right, one last time, let's see what we started with. The 63 split window went from gnarly 90s neon to a ravishing red street rod. We took the Testarossa's tacky tampos and made it a Tuscan trophy. And finally, my favorite, the Ferrari F40 from toy to treasure. I want to thank Jacob for letting me work on these three fantastic pieces of his childhood. It was an honor and it was a fun challenge to do shiny builds for a change. I think I might take a break from them for a bit, though they are really stressful for me. <laughs> but how do you think I did? Love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my take on shiny builds and if you want to see more of them or you think I should stick to the weathered stuff. As always, I want to thank my patrons including the ones that you saw at the beginning and my other patrons, including Mid Island Customs Diecast. Thank you so much, Evan. My amazing wife, Carolyn. Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. Thank you, Andrew. Double B's Customs. Gary Tasker. Diecast Pirate. Mr. Zanzibar 91. Thank you, Clarence. And Tracy Sutherland. Thanks, Aunt Tracy. I'd also like to thank my Douglas level sponsors, the Good Bad Better podcast, Jordan Kleinman, Curtis Crafts, Jim Silva, and Devil's Details Diecast. Please check out everybody's stuff in the description below, subscribe to it, and tell them I sent you. They'll love to hear that. If you really like what I do, it is 100% supported by my patrons and by my commissions. And you can learn more about supporting the channel and at the same time getting behind the scenes access, early releases to videos, and discounts on commissions over at flyingvaliant.com. I do commission builds, decals, and 3D printed parts. If that's something you need for your projects, please email me at flyingvaliant at gmail.com. And, and if I can't help you, I can probably get you in touch with someone who can. By the way, if you really like what I do and you want to support a great automotive themed artist, you can go visit my brother's Redbubble or Tee Public stores and buy some Flying Valiant merch or some of his diecast themed artwork and buy a sticker or two or a t-shirt or a bedspread. I won't judge. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who has watched my videos, subscribed, liked, shared, supported me, left me nice comments. It's really meant a lot, especially where I've been for the last couple of months mentally and physically. You're all amazing, and I am grateful for each and every one of you. As always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Cheese bags.